Today, we're going to be talking to one of the OGs of penny stock trading, Tim Gratani. OG, does that, does that have something to do with his last name? Maybe the G? Original gangster or original Gratani? I think I'm going to go with original Gratani for the rest of this video. So and that being said, you know, we're bringing back Tim to the channel. You know, one of the, one of the very most successful penny stock trading traders out there. And today we're going to be talking about the five tips from Tim Gratani for all of you that are new to this and looking to really maximize your potential in this niche. All right, everyone, before we get started, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell on YouTube to be notified as soon as we drop a new video. We've got a whole series with Tim Gratani. To definitely check out the archive as well if you stumbled across this video. And as I mentioned, be sure to ring that bell to be notified as soon as a new video drops. All right, Tim, welcome back. Lay it on me. What's your top five tips for those new penny stock degenerates that are looking to, looking to join us in this weird and wacky niche? Hey, Tim. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so the five tips I came up with are really things that I felt like most helped me early in my career. Um, I, I tried to remember those days really well because, you know, you kind of trade for a while and you lose touch with your roots and where you came from. Um, but I do remember the early struggle and a lot of the things that you know, I, I, my, my analogy for getting started, you know, it's, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Rocky movies. You know, I use this analogy a lot, but I would just think of like Clubber Lang and Rocky three. And they're always like, what, what was it like in beginning started in penny stocks? And I'm like, pain. It was lots of oh, pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> um, I mean, number one tip probably comes as no surprise, but that would be cutting losses quickly. Um, something that I was actually really, really good about early in my career and lost touch with along the way, um, where kind of middle of my career, I got a little bit cocky. I got a little bit, um, you know, I, I just got undisciplined and I got away with it for too long. And then I got burned really badly and went through a really rough stretch for about a year where I just kept taking big hit after big hit, where I'd give back a week or two weeks of gains in one trade. Um, now cutting losses quickly. Um, I, I kind of misunderstood that concept a little bit early in my career. Um, to me, it was almost like, oh my gosh, if I'm in the trade and I'm currently red, panic. Like, You're this right. is bad. Like, I, I should probably start thinking about cutting it because I'm down. And that's, you know, an overreaction. Um, I've also seen people who want to say like, oh, I'll cut at 1% loss or I'll cut at 2% loss. They have this like preconceived number. Yep. For me, what cut losses quickly means and to do it in an effective way. And what really helped me as a trader was I cut it quickly based off of the chart yes. and the chart trend. So looking at it from a long perspective, if I am buying a stock and I'm risking, I want to risk off of a previous support level. So maybe low of day, or maybe the last major dip to hold on the five minute chart or something Red like that. Green. Yeah. Um, Break maybe that's 5% Break away. Maybe that's 10% away. Maybe that's 20% away. And what I have to do in combination is I need to take smart size based on how far away it is. So I'm always thinking about how much will I lose if I'm wrong? That's like the first question that should come into my mind on any trade. So if it's 20% away, obviously I'm playing a little bit smaller than if it's 5% away. Cause I always want my loss at the time. My max loss was, gosh, it must've been like $20 when I first started. Like I, I really did not want to lose much at all. Um, but it was always based around a chart point. It was not some preconceived number in my head. It was not, oh my gosh, it just went from being slightly up on the position to slightly down. I better get out fast. Oh, good. I got out quickly. Um, it's all about the chart. So for me, that's what cutting losses quickly is and doing so in an intelligent manner. The second main tip I would have for you know anybody really is start with small size. And uh, this comes from my own experiences. Again, I am so fortunate I did this. Uh, if, if I had had it my way when I first started, I probably would have started a lot bigger than I had. And you know what? I blew up my first account. You're right. um, I started with $1,500 of my own money. So all I lost was $1,500 when I blew that account up. I had worked a summer job that summer. I made $4,000 that summer at my summer job. So that was very, very recoverable. It was very easy to replace that $1,500 I had lost. If I'd started with five grand, 10 grand, something like that, where, you know, I just, I'd be done. Like, I think, I think I would have blown up that first account and that would have been the end of the Tim Gritani story. Uh, I would not have been able to refund that account in a quick way. And, you know, maybe time would have gone by. I'd gotten busy in a career. I have no idea, but I, I certainly would not have been able to just immediately reload and try again and learn from my mistakes. 
So uh, I, I really think it's imperative to expect mistakes early on. Uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, that's something that, that I, you know, to, to agree. It's like, I mean, listen, if you've got a million, congrats. But I mean, again, if you're completely new, you know, I mentioned it in the intro. I mean, this is, you know, you know the, the biggest thing that I think a lot of people struggle with is the stocks that we trade, they don't follow any sort of rationale. I mean, this is, this is madness in this niche mm -hmm. and you need to get, you know, you need to get your training wheels to get used to that niche. So even if you got a million bucks, I mean, I say handcuff yourself with that small account, because as Tim mentioned, if it, it, you know, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to probably going to blow up. At least if you blow up, it's a grand, it's two grand, it's, you know, it's, it's three grand, five grand, you know, it's not, 50. It's not a hundred. It's not a million. And, you know, I think that that, that forces good decisions. It forces you to have good habits because like you may, I mean, I mean, here he is taking $20 losses, but that's teaching him to stick to those losses because, you know, he sees that account balance shrinking. And if you've got a hundred grand in your account and you have no idea what you're doing, just bad things are going to happen ultimately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and honestly, I don't think I know a single successful trader now who did not blow up at least one account. Yep. Yep. And would you rather, to, to you, the listener, would you rather be a grand or a hundred grand? You know, mm -hmm. I know what I'll choose. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so my third, my third tip kind of goes hand in hand with that, but it's don't expect quick money. Um, I certainly did when I first started. Um, I, I thought it would be easy. I thought I'd jump in and make money right away. And part of what goes along with this is uh, like, I, I'm, I'm lucky I started when I started because I still relied on my parents a lot for, you know, I, I was still in college. They were there paying a lot of my college expenses. Um, even when I decided to go full-time at first, um, at the beginning of 2012, it would have been, uh, I was living at home with my parents for a while. You know, a lot of my expenses were covered. I wasn't having to pull money out of my account for rent at the end of every month or credit card bills or things like that. Um, so, I, I mean, the last thing I would want as a new trader is the pressure of starting a new month saying, I've got to make $1,500 this month, or I'm not going to be able to pay my rent yep. because and a lot of people do that, unfortunately. Oh yeah. It's very unfortunate because that that's just an impossible pressure to trade with. I think um, even, even in parts of my career where I don't have the pressure to make money. You know, maybe, maybe I just have a week that I feel like is a slow week. And I say, oh, I, I don't want this week to be slow. I want to have a bigger green number. And then I start to force things. And just the, the second I force anything as a trader, it's almost always a loss. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, I think anyone as a trader is so much more effective if they can just sit back and wait for their A plus setups. Um, so if, if you have that added pressure where it's, I need money and I need money fast, like it's just, it's over before it even begins, I think. Yeah, it's so hard. I mean, you know, again, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'm sure everyone watching this video has heard the 90% failure rate. I mean, it's, it, this is, I mean, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing that you're embarking to do. And, and listen, if you're worried about the car payment or the mortgage payment or the rent or, or, you know, whatever, I mean, it's just, that's just gasoline on the fire at the end of the day. And, and I mean, so, so back to tip number two, I mean, just scale down, you know, again, you can learn with 500 bucks. I mean, you're, you're not now, now keep in mind, you're not going to make five grand next month with a $500 account, but you can learn the ropes and, and scale up, save money. You know, I talk about selling toys, junk you don't need, you know, sell the motorcycle, sell the boat, you know, whatever, but you can still be learning. But again, if, if you're trying to, if you're trying to make your, $2,000 mortgage payment with a $2,000 account, man, you're doomed. I'm sorry. You're doomed. So, yeah. I mean, my, my learning curve was nine months from first yep. video lesson to, you know, getting back above break even and having my first big win. And I, I mean, I think a lot of the feedback I've gotten is that's maybe a little bit on the quick side, even. And I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, nine months is a long time to go without any kind of income. With zero so. income, you know, and unless you got a side job or you got savings or you got parents to help you out. I mean, you, yeah. you know, you could be going a year with, with, with Z or, or you might even be negative. I mean, I mean, that's again, you know, when I know people see the dollar signs and, and all we see it all online with the pop-up ads and TikToks. I mean, just when I thought it couldn't get worse, 
TikTok comes along and it's like, oh my God, it's like, you know, don't even get me started on, on financial TikTok. But I mean, it's, you might be negative after a year. I mean, can you do that? You know, so, so that, that, that's the biggest thing is just make sure you got your ducks in row. You can paper trade or you can trade 10 shares, you know, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. And honestly, that's probably why 90% of traders fail is because they can't stay in the game long enough to actually learn what they need to learn. Um, yep. I mean, my, my biggest lessons were my failures and my losses. And the fact that, you know, combining two and three, you know, I was trading small and, um, you know, I had time on my side. I wasn't desperate to make fast money. I mean, that, that gave me a chance to learn from those errors and adjust. So just, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Tip number four, never follow alerts. <laughs> Yes, that's I mean, I'm sure you guys preach that a lot, too, but it, it I, I did it. I followed alerts for Me too. a couple of months. Me too. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I <laughs> And you're just chasing prices. You're waiting on somebody else to tell you what to do. You're just being a mindless sheep and you are never matching the entry, never matching the exit. It's just, and, you know, and, and the thing is, too, like, you know, the, the thing is, even if I mean, you know, and this is something that you know, we all talk about, you know, again, you're, 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 cha- you know, you're not thinking for yourself. I think you need to be thinking for yourself, but ultimately like this, the point I make is like, like, even if it works for you, let's say alerts work for you. What if the, the guy goes away or the gal goes away or, 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 you know, or, or they just stop doing alerts. I mean, you're never going to get self-sufficient doing that. I mean, you gotta now learn from, okay. Okay. Why did Gratani buy here? Why did he sell here? But if you think that's a viable strategy, and again, we all think it is. I was there. I was there 15 years ago too. But it's just not gonna work over time. It it, it just doesn't. Yeah, so. absolutely not. Yeah, and, and I had the best of intentions. I thought, oh, I'll I'll study and learn while I make a little money on the side following alerts. I didn't make money following alerts. So <laughs> if you ever meet somebody who makes money following alerts, let me know. I'll be really curious, <laughs> like how they do it. They probably get the alert five minutes before anybody else. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, just not not a vi- not not gonna help. It just won't help. And, and the fifth point that I wanted to bring up um, is just to try a lot of things. I think this was crucial to my success. Um, you know, I, I was in multiple chat rooms. I was trying all these different strategies. I, I mean, I was all over the place. And yeah, it was a lot. Like it was, I mean, it was borderline too much. Like, I think it still helps though, because I had months of you know, trying to short sell this or buy this and, oh, I want to try this pattern and, oh, here's a short report on this stock. So I'm going to short it because, you know, these people say fundamentally it's a fraud and, oh, here's a new pump. I'll buy that. Like I was all over the place, but I was doing it with small size. And so, yeah, I had crazy mixed results. I wasn't really making any kind of money, but at the same time, I was learning a lot about myself. I was figuring out, you know what, I'm really uncomfortable doing this. And I, you know, I kind of get this one. This kind of makes sense. And, oh, look at this. I've had pretty good results buying breakouts, but um, I have not done well short selling. I basically blew up my first account trying to short sell. So it, uh, you know, tracking it too. Like not only, not only try a lot of things, but track what you're trying. Yes. That's, uh, that, that, that that's the big where, thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that spreadsheet that I had that I tracked my trades where I would say what I was trading and like what pattern it was supposed to be or whatever my reasoning behind the trade was, that was huge. Because when I finally did have that blow up moment, I was able to take my step back and say, okay, I've been at this for six months. I just blew up an account. Um, let's see where I've done well and where I haven't. And uh, then from there, I was able to just cut out you know, 75% of the patterns I was trying to trade and say, you know what? I've done well with breakouts. I've done well with buying new promotions. Let's just trade only that for a while and be disciplined enough to go two, three days without making a trade if my pattern is not there. You know, Ignore all the hoopla in the chat rooms. Uh, forget about it. If everybody's celebrating a win that you didn't take part in, it's okay because it wasn't my pattern. Yep. And that is how I got back to break even. And that is how I started to have my first big wins. And then I developed confidence because I was having fairly consistent results with these patterns and I was able to size up because of that confidence. And then I was off and running. And then from there, I added in one setup at a time. Yep. So that, that is basically how I did it early in my career. And uh, I think that was just a huge, crucial part of it. Yeah, I think, you know, it's important to, you know, be exposed to every, I mean, again, there's, especially now, even more so like back when you were getting started. I mean, now you add in, 
you got crypto out there. I mean, everyone's mm-hmm. trading options now. I mean, I remember, you know, again, back in, nobody talked about options in 2012, 2013, oh, no. you know, now it's all the rage and crypto and all this stuff out there. So I 100% agree. Try it all. Maybe you're the world's greatest crypto trader. Hell, maybe you're the world's greatest Forex trader, even though I don't know if anyone actually exists that makes money in Forex over time, but maybe you're that guy. But track that data. I think that is mm-hmm. such, that, that's what people do is, is I think, and, and again, I've made all these mistakes too. It's like, it, it's funny how it works. You'll think something's working, when it really isn't, you know, and, and you go back and you're like, wait a minute, my, I thought my win rate was terrible on this. And I thought it was great on this. And then once you start tracking that and reviewing that stuff, all of a sudden, now you can get some clarity. And now you know, okay, I can dabble over here. But these are the ones I'm going to size up on I because mean, I got a, you know, a 75% win rate on this setup. But you, you only find that out by, by doing the you know, the stuff that nobody wants to do. And that's, that's journaling and tracking and writing this down and reviewing it at the end of the day, end of week, end of month. I mean, that's all that, that like film time, you know, like if you're an NFL quarterback, it's like, you know, you're only spending an hour on the field, but it's all that work you're doing back in the film room that really makes a difference. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. So that being said, thank you, Tim. Thanks for coming back again. And everyone, um, you know, definitely we'll have the links below. One of the big reasons we have Gratani here is, you know, we've been talking a lot about his, his old course, which is still hundred percent applicable today, but also trading tickers too is now out now and uh, definitely check it out. You know, I know this is only a 10 minute video, but I believe Gratani said it's almost 10 or 11 hours in the course. So I know we went fast. We skipped through stuff. I probably talked too much like always, but check out the course. You won't have me interrupting it during that. So you'll probably get way more information. So the links are below. Check it out. Thanks, Tim. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.